Well, good afternoon, good morning, wherever and whenever you are viewing this this recording. Thank you for joining us at Limmer Education on an important topic that I love to to talk about, and that is on anaphylaxis. It's critically important that we begin to understand exactly what is going on within our patient and knowing exactly what it is. So anaphylaxis itself is an immediate systemic hypersensitivity reaction that's triggered by an overwhelming immune response. And generally what we're looking at here is that we can actually have these things that are either really, really minor, really, really severe, or somewhere in between. Now, some definitions that we need to know about here is number one is antigens. Antigens are substances that provoke an immune response. We're taking these in either through our breathing, they absorb in through our skin. Sometimes we'll take them in through the GI tract. We may get injected with something. Also, what we're looking at here is for patients such as myself that have had a transplanted organ, now the, the antigen makeup begins to change as something foreign comes into the body. Antibodies. Antibodies are proteins that are produced by the immune system to help to neutralize the antigen and, wait, there's more, now it's going to lead into some degree of immunity from future attacks. May not be complete, but there will be a little bit of immunity as you're going through. In anaphylaxis, Understanding the pathophysiology, and we're going to get into that in just a little bit, is just as important as understanding the signs and symptoms that you're going to begin to see. So the mechanisms that we see with anaphylaxis coming up here is number one is that we have a rapid IgE mediated response. This is the antibodies that are, are released. And as a result of this, we get just loads and loads and loads and loads of histamine that gets dumped in. Histamine is an interesting thing. Again, we've all experienced histamine release in the spring, sometimes even in the fall here in Kentucky. We have two seasons for, for allergies. But massive dumping of histamine into the body leads to vasodilation, so our blood vessels get really, really large. Inside the blood vessels, it's almost like there's a little man in there with an ice pick that is now poking holes in the vasculature and now we're beginning to get fluid in the form of plasma that is beginning to leak out which now remember vasodilation drops the blood pressure we're losing plasma really really quickly as it's coming out of the vasculature and because of that our blood pressure is going to go down as well the other thing that we have in here is while it's dilating the vasculature it's constricting the bronchi. So not only do we not have a or not only do we have a circulation problem, but we've also got an airway problem. And this shows up in the signs and symptoms that we that we see here. So we've talked about this whole process of what's going on internally. Let's take a look and see how the body now begins to react. In this, what we're looking at is that patient will begin to have hives or more commonly known as urticaria. If you're studying for the National Registry exam, I can almost guarantee you that you will see that word urticaria. And it's the body's first dramatic response to an internal alarm. Basically what happens here is that you have a visible manifestation of a systemic inflammation that changes the skin from being really, really smooth into what almost kind of looks like a topographical map. Basically, you've got a terrain of raised, red, really, really intensely itchy welts and hives that may actually begin to weep. Histamine launches a complex defensive strategy that is overwhelming. Within this, the blood vessels, as I said earlier, they will dilate, and boy, they will dilate really, really quickly. As a result, their walls become really, really permeable, allowing the plasma to begin to seep into the surrounding skin. So what you're actually seeing that is making these raised welts is going to be the plasma that is coming from within the vascular system. 
Second thing we're going to come across here is angioedema. Angioedema is a really, really serious swelling that occurs deep within the soft tissues as well as the mucous membrane of the body. It generally affects the looser tissue because that allows it to expand and to puff out and to actually have ballooning of those particular regions. Angioedema is most commonly seen in areas like the lips, the eyes, the hands, the feet, in the genitalia. Now, again, as I said, this happens when the body begins to experience more of these fluid shifts. The fluid is coming out of the vasculature and going into the interstitial tissue. And this helps to feed into more of a histamine release for a patient. Now, angioedema is really uncomfortable for your patient because you can imagine that the pressure that it's putting in those particular areas but angioedema can become life-threatening for our patient, in particular when it occurs in really, really critical areas such as the throat or the tongue. As a result of these, and especially in small children, it can block airways or interfere with the patient's breathing. When you're talking with your patient, make sure that you are assessing the patient on a regular basis for Okay, D does your throat feel tight? If it does, please let me know. Is there a change in the tone of the patient's voice? Are they saying, oh, you know, I feel like I'm getting a little bit hoarse. These are all important signs that we've got angioedema that is taking place within our, within our patient. Let's talk about airway constriction for these particular patients, because this, this is one of the things that will kill our patient faster than anything else. So basically what we're looking at here for, for our patient is that we got to know that anaphylaxis attacks the respiratory system by causing a sudden narrowing of the, of the bronchi. Now, when we get an, a, an a allergen that triggers the immune response, again, remember we dump out histamine. I keep repeating that, that's important to remember. And while it's dilating, the vasculature, what it's doing is that it is constricting the bronchi. One of the things that you can see over here on the left side would be relatively a normal sized uh, bronchi that allows air to flow in and out freely without any problems. Over on the right side, now we see a constricted bronchi that reduces the, the amount of air, not only that can get in, but also the air that can get out. Similar mechanism is what we would see with patients that have asthma. I like to say that this is truly the Hotel California of respiratory diseases because the air can get in much easier, even though that's a challenge, it can get in much easier then it is able to be removed from the alveoli. As a result of smooth muscles around these tiny bronchi airways, they contract sharply. While remember we talked about the mast cells and the basophils, they're releasing inflammatory chemicals and just dumping them out. And as a result of that, now our patient begins to feel like that they're literally breathing through a straw, trying to draw air into their their alveoli into their lungs but they've got a really really narrow passageway to get it in as well as to get it out now this is the body's immune system at its most extreme it's a protective mechanism that has gotten too protective and now it has moved from taking care of the body and trying to sustain life to basically it, that overwhelming response that we showed you back at the beginning of the session now it ultimately results in the fact that our patient is dying. Now, one of the things that's really important for you and I as paramedics is that we have to kind of keep an idea of what are the most common antigens or allergens that can lead into specific types of reactions. With foods in particular, what we're looking at are peanuts and shellfish. I've taken care of patients that have had anaphylactic reactions from both of these foods. Um, and generally what you will do is you'll find somebody that will uh, not be aware, especially with peanuts, not be aware that there are, are, are nuts in whatever they're eating. 
even if they're really, really careful about being able to identify what's what's in their food, sometimes it's cooked in an area or sometimes you'll get on a plane and they'll make an announcement that they're not going to give us our little teeny tiny packet of, of, of nuts as they're going through because somebody has uh, an allergy to peanuts and just the dust in the air might be enough to set them off. Insects things. Bees and wasps are really, really common types of instigators for anaphylactic reactions. Medications, and in particular, the psyllins, penicillin, ampicillin, amoxicillin, can lead into some really, really serious types of reactions. And then the last one would be pollen. Generally, we don't see anaphylactic reactions from pollen, although we may feel like that we're having one. In the past, Latex was a big, big issue because everything that we used in medicine was basically made out of latex from our gloves to our IV catheters to our uh, IV uh, uh, drip sets. And sometimes these patients would have some really, really severe types of, of reactions by just touching. I can remember again when I worked in Georgia, uh, rolled up at the local community college and met a student out there that was having some shortness of breath. And the first thing she said is, you can't touch me uh, with your gloves because she had a severe uh, reaction or severe allergy to, to latex. So in that situation, there was no body uh, liquids that were, were present. So I took my gloves off. I cleaned my hands really, really well. And we went on with, uh, with the assessment.